Hi everyone, it's me. This is going to be a video about workplace violence and why I believe it happens. Recently in Wisconsin, we've had two separate incidents of people that come into work and gun down their co-workers. And these men were both long-term employees, men that were vested, men that probably had dedicated their lives to these organizations and were someday looking forward to retirement. But I, I, I'll give you some insight on, on why I, I believe these shootings took place, how we can get some insight and hopefully how we can prevent it from happening in the future. So if you've ever seen the movie Falling Down with Michael Douglas, you see a man on the edge at the end and he has hit rock bottom and is snapped. And when it comes to being in the workplace, I was in the military, I worked for the city of Milwaukee and I worked for the county of Milwaukee as well. And mostly was surrounded by uh, majority men and more, than, more so than women. Some workplaces, when I worked in a bank, I was more, around more women than men. But in the workplace, in any workplace, women need one another because we vent to one another when we're dealing with stressful situations, with harassment, dealing with negativity, um, racism, etc. And that's what we do. We vent to one another and we talk. And I think overall, I always felt more comfortable also talking with certain men about issues I had experienced in the workplace. I don't think men do the same. I don't think if they do and they have something to say about certain way they're treated, what you're always told when you work in a shop or in an environment majority men is this is this is a shop, we're gonna have shop talk, people talk a certain way, people behave a certain way, people act a certain way, and you just you either fit in or you don't. You sometimes just have to deal and just have to really um, learn how to exist in an environment which is derogatory, negative, hostile, racist, etc. And you learn very quickly when there's a union involved. Most long-term employees are a protected class. They, It is almost impossible to get rid of someone in the workplace that has been vested, that has been there a long time, unless they bring a gun to work unless there is an act of violence where they physically threaten someone, et cetera, et cetera. There has to be a huge extenuating circumstance in order to get rid of someone, a long-term employee and some regular employees as well. So what happens when you work in shop? A couple of situations I dealt with when I worked for different organizations, military sexual harassment every day. I told, they said, nothing's going to be done. Nothing was done. When I worked for the uh, city of Milwaukee, I was harassed and bullied by our department supervisor every single day. I was told during the first six months of my employment, which I was more than qualified for, he would say, I can get rid of you, I can fire you, you're on probation, blah, 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 blah. If you weren't in his clique, you were basically an outsider and he would target you because he was, he was a miserable old son of a you know what and one of the absolute worst supervisors I had ever had in my entire life. He was disgusting. He was d just a horrible, horrible person. It, it, I would go into another supervisor's office that I trusted and I would cry and I'd say, I can't take this anymore. And he'd say, well, you know, you can talk to HR, but HR doesn't do anything because everyone above him protects him too. So it really is. Oh, it was so disgusting. So eventually I transferred out and went somewhere else and I worked for a really nice supervisor who was a woman and, you know, and then I eventually went over to the county and then worked in a shop with the majority men and was told it's shop talk. This is just the way it is. And there was one assistant supervisor who harassed me, bullied me, made derogatory comments about me. He'd say, you're just a secretary. You're not allowed to answer questions, blah, blah, blah. And one time we got into it and I gave it to him because I was, I was at the end of my rope and uh, we had a huge verbal altercation in the office. And then I said, enough is enough. And he was talked to and 
he eventually apologized and I said, well, why don't you like me? And he says, he, he said he didn't understand my position and why I felt I was more important than the assistant supervisors. And I said, I don't, I said, I'm a part of the team, but he was threatened by me for, for no reason. And so for that reason, because I had taken steps to do something, he had stopped liking me or had taken offense to me. And instead of talking with me about it and getting clarification as to why I did what I did at work and why I performed certain job, you know, duties, he took it upon himself to hold a grudge against me and made it just one of the most miserable places. I, I would consistently talk with our supervisor and I'd say, I can't do this anymore. And he was just, he'd say, well, you know, we, this is just the way he is. And, you know, he has this rough exterior, but nothing was done. And so what it would, you know, as a woman, I, I had other women to vent to, other women who had been, you know, walked a mile in my shoes. But what happens if you're a man and you've been in the workplace and you're supposed to just take it and you're supposed to deal with the racism and deal with the harassment and deal with the negativity and, Fortunately for women, we, we can vent men. What do you do? You go tell on someone and they call you the P word or you call, they call you a little bitch or whatever. Why do we think these things happen? Because no one takes us seriously and nothing is ever done. And no one ever stands up and says anything because they're afraid to lose their jobs too. So what has to happen? You have to, can an independent counsel to come in Interview the employees, the long-term, short-term employees, and say, is there anything we need to change? What in this workplace environment needs to change? What do we need to be, what do we need to take more seriously? What do we need to do to diminish someone from wanting to, from a long-term employee, short-term employee, anyone, any employee, from going home, bringing gun to work, and choosing to gun down people at work? We need to get this to stop, but we need to ch make changes. Uh, there had to be changes. There have been changes in the military regarding mi military sexual trauma. It's finally taken seriously. Where I work for in the city, uh, things uh, really had not changed. And I'm sure the guy is still working there. <laughs> that the, the tyrant that I work for is still there because he was vested and he wants to retire out with his huge pension. And then at the county, I had been sexually harassed by a supervisor and he had been there for, I think, at least eight years and he was fully vested and he was released from his position because they finally took me seriously and I had enough evidence. But also I was dragged through the mud too, because when you tell the county, city, et cetera, anywhere with the union, they have lawyers. And the lawyer came up to me and she blamed me for the harassment. And then they tried to turn the table on me and and tried to make certain accusations against me and tried to downplay everything. And so that's all I know is that it's almost impossible to deal with any sort of negativity, derog you know, derogatory behaviors and racism at work, unless you have a company that is strong, supports their employees and does not tolerate any negativity or any sorts of behaviors which cause strife, which cause division, and which cause people to not even want to be at work anymore. Let's make changes so people want to come to work, they want to do their job, because you never know what someone is dealing with outside of work. What if their wife just got cancer? What if they just lost their child? What if God forbid they just lost a parent or a parent had to go into a nursing home. We don't know what people are dealing with. And that's why I think it is so important and why I was always kind to people at work. Because if you are not kind to people at work and you are a bully and you are a tyrant, if someone snaps, just know that they go after the people that have caused them the, the greatest amount of pain. And I'm not blaming those that were shot in these circumstances in Milwaukee. I wasn't there. But all I know is, is it's, it's so important to be kind to people, especially during Corona. Everyone has been at, the, at their breaking point. So please be kind. 
it doesn't take that long. And plus, if you see something, say something. Nobody stood up for me at work. And people would say, you can tell, but just don't use, don't use my name. I'm not going to make a statement on your behalf. It was horrible. And these are, I'm talking about men that refused to stand up and do the right thing. So anyways, that's all I wanted to talk about. Please make changes at your workplace. Please bring in an independent counsel to talk to people. Take things seriously. Get rid of the bad eggs. Get rid of the tyrant. Get rid of anyone who is racist, who causes strife, derogatory actions, negative behavior. Just get rid of them. Get some good people in there so you have a safe workplace environment because it all starts at the top. It rolls its way down. And sometimes the guy who's been rolled on over and over and over again can't take it anymore. So please take it serious. I hope everyone has a good day and I will be back soon. Bye-bye.